Welcome to the Happy Tans Podcast, where you will learn everything you need to know about running a successful sunless tanning business. We will interview some of the industry's top business owners to find out how they took a passion and turned it into a prosperous business. And here's your host, Grant Conscious. Hello and welcome to the Happy Tans Podcast. Joining us today is Sarah Rubino from Bronze Beauty Spray Tanning in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. How are you doing today, Sarah? Good. How are you doing? I'm doing wonderful. Thank you so much for taking time out of your day to to join us here and, and share some information with everybody. Sure, no problem. Thanks for having me. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. If you want to kind of give the uh, listeners some some background information about yourself and your business, that'd be that'd be wonderful. Sure, yeah. Um, As you heard, my name is Sarah. I'm from Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, and I currently also reside here. Um, That is where Bronze Beauty Spray Tanning is. Um, For the past, I'd say, four years or so, we've been in business since 2012, so for the past four years, we've been a mobile-only salon. And then um, recently, this past September, we decided to open a small studio to have clients come to us. Um, so it's uh, currently me, and I have two other girls that help me spray, um, and that's pretty much it. Yeah, that's great. Yeah, I remember the transition you had there into the to the location from from being mobile only, and you like yeah. pretty much everyone else has been on the podcast that went through that transition at some point. Some people need mm-hmm. to to kind of take the leap of faith. So. Um, yeah. as, as you know, and everybody knows there's, it's a roller coaster, uh, owning your own business, so lots of ups and downs. Um, mm-hmm. if you want to share with us, you know, the best, uh, if you want to share with us both, both ends of that, the best and the worst entrepreneurial moments that you've had in your business, we'd love to hear that. Sure. Yeah. I'll start with, I guess the worst moment. Um, it was probably the first year into business. I started the business in May. So, of course, that's kind of like here in Pittsburgh, that's our busy time. So for the first couple months up until probably the beginning of fall, I was pretty steady and busy. And then uh, winter hit and I got really slow and it kind of freaked me out. And, you know, I didn't know what to do. I was really questioning if this was for me, you know, to get into. Am I doing the right things? Am I, you know, my clients are not coming back. What am I doing wrong? So that was probably kind of the worst moment because I never really knew what a slow season was. And, you know, as a business owner, when you have no one coming into your salon or, you know, going to appointments, you kind of, you know, freak out a little bit. So I'd have to say that was probably the worst experience that I've had so far, Um, which I guess isn't too bad, but you really learn from it and everything. Sure, sure. Um, And that's, that's something a lot of people face. And like you said, people don't know, so they get into it and... I feel like yeah. a lot of people probably get a little down during that time, but you know that's the time to work on the business where you don't have as many clients. But it's definitely alarming for people that aren't prepared for it. Yeah, yeah. When no one tells you about it, you know, you think you're going to open a business and it's just going to take off and go, and then you get, you know, standstill, and you're like, oh my gosh, what do I do? <laughs> absolutely, so. absolutely. And on the other end of the spectrum, what what was the the best entrepreneurial moment that you've had? Um, probably the best. Like I. I think I have, there's like lots of little things, um, you know, that have been the best moments, um, you know, spraying local celebrities, booking, you know, different fitness shows, um, being the host tanner for those, um, you know, people knowing about Bronze Beauty. But the best moment I would have to say, like overall of that is opening the studio. Um, I, you know, from the get go, that was my goal was to open an actual location and have people come to me. And um, I didn't think it was going to happen this soon. I thought I was going to, you know, still take a little more time to be mobile. Um, And I kind of, you know, the studio kind of fell into my hands real quickly and I had to make a decision. And I was like, let's go for it. And it turned out to be a very good decision. And I'm really glad that I did it um, because now I feel like my clientele has picked up now that we have an actual location. Sure. Yeah, I was going to, that was kind of going to lead into a question that, that we didn't necessarily cover, but is it how has it been since that opened, um, since you started the location? Uh, you said, obviously, it's been good because more people are coming to you, so I'm assuming overall it's it's been well for you and, and helped for the business. Yeah, it definitely has. I mean, it's a, little, it's a little challenging because it is in kind of like an office setting where we have other businesses, so I don't have any, you know, traction from the road coming in. But um, I was really hesitant. You know, I'm still doing mobile, um, but I was really hesitant as to whether people wanted to come here or not. Um, But I found a lot of the new clients are, you know, more willing to come to me. So it's cut down on travel for us. It made us less stressed. We're not on the road as much. 
Um, and actually having a physical address now has really helped because now a lot more people in the area or um, learning about me and are finding out about me, which is good. Yeah, that that always helps in having the physical location. I think a lot of it has to do with the comfort the comfort of the clients and probably people being able to come to you instead of you coming to them. And obviously, like you said, cuts down a lot of headaches, a lot of the travel. Uh, you can get a lot more, see a lot more people. So that that's going to help overall. And, and Sarah, uh, this is again kind of off the cuff, but you said that when you started, it was around May of 2012. Mm-hmm. What what did you do right when you started to to grow that or, or to find clients? I guess because you said you were pretty busy until the fall. So. Do you remember, was there anything, like as far as marketing goes, was there anything in particular that you did? Um, I know just I was really trying to be a lot on social media, um, you know, on my personal social media, letting all my friends know and having my friends tell people. So a lot of it was my close friends and family in the beginning, mm-hmm. um, you know, kind of booking appointments and let me practice on them and everything. And then once they got word out about it, then other people started um, coming in. But I also tried to go you know, around to different businesses and let them know about my business and um, just kind of make my, you know, my name out there. Um, I kind of did a little bit of print advertising, um, you know, in the beginning to try to get my name out there. Um, But I'd say most of it was probably the social media that really helped um, get the name out there. Yeah, that's a good way to connect. And I know that your website, at least now, ranks really high in Google and the other search engines. So I'm sure that brings you a lot of traffic and with a physical location, probably even more so. Yes. Yes, definitely. Absolutely. So as you went from a mobile tanning company back in May of 2012, probably working by yourself, and now you have a couple people working with you in your physical location, what what changes did you personally make uh, for, you know, the things that you did on a daily, weekly, like monthly basis within the business? I'm sure, you know, at first it was a lot of hands-on with the actual clients, and now it might have changed a little bit. So if you'd share any insight into that. Yeah, I mean, definitely, um, you know, Since I started the business, I was actually working a full-time job during the day, so I was only able to focus my time on my business on the evenings and weekends. Um, So once I, you know, no longer had that full-time job, um, I feel a lot has changed because I've been able to, you know, focus a lot of my time in building my business. And, you know, during the days when we're kind of slow, especially now that it's the slow time, um, you know, I'm trying to think of ways to, um, you know, grow the business. So I'm, you know, on social media, I'm on the internet, I'm, you know, reaching out to clients. Um, So definitely is a lot, I mean, as far as, you know, my daily routine, it's every day, it's different. Um, But I mean, that's, you know, going from, working a full-time job to working this full-time, um, you know, a lot has definitely, you know, changed in the aspect of the business. I'm able to grow it a lot more now. Yeah, it seems like a, it, now you can focus a lot more at working on the business and not necessarily in the business, and that helps you grow. Like you said, the, the contact right. with with existing clients, maybe potential clients, is a good opportunity to, to kind of help grow that. So it frees up right. a lot more time for you. Yes, definitely. Definitely. So if you had to pinpoint one thing that you've done very well over the last four or five years now that we're already in the 2017 to help grow your business, is there one particular thing that you could pinpoint and say, you know, this this made the most difference in my business and growing the business? Yeah, I think the way that myself and my employees interact with our clients Um, I always try to put myself, you know, when I go to other businesses, I put myself in, you know, I'm the client or I'm the customer. And I always try and think of how I want to be treated um, from the business owner. So when I have clients come in or when I go to clients' homes, I try to, um, I guess, in a way, become a friend to them, but also, you know, in the professional level, like I try to, you know, get to know them. Um, you know, I try to figure out, you know, why they're getting a spray tan, um, you know, try to really get into their mind and get to know them more. And I feel like, you know, customer service, obviously, you know, any business owner knows is the the biggest thing, you know, the best thing that you need to do for your business, because um, without your clients, you don't have a business. So I really feel like, you know, me and my employees really connect with our clients and, you know, get to know them and, you know, make them feel comfortable because, you know, you're either coming here or coming to them, they're, you know, spray tanning, you have to take off clothes. So a lot of people are uncomfortable about that. So, you know, making sure that they're comfortable with us, um, I think is the biggest thing that we've done good so far. Yeah, absolutely. And it's, 
it is a very, you know, vulnerable, I guess is the best word for it, yeah. situation. People are nearly nude in front of you and it's, mm-hmm. it's it, it, making them comfortable is a, is a huge thing. And, and, you know, that's something you kind of have to learn and get adjusted to. Like, how do you make people feel comfortable? And that again, comes back, coming back to customer service there. That'll make or break any business. And we've seen that more so in, in the way that, uh, it seems that the world's interconnected now with social media and things. Now we're even seeing larger companies have to kind of make that adjustment to a more personable right. service where it's actually, yeah, we care about each individual person and not just they're our customers. You know, they're, they're people right. that are spending their time and money with you and on you. So we need mm-hmm. to make sure that they feel very, very special and taken care of. Right. Yeah. So now these, these are on to a couple more little technical questions. Uh, if you want to share with us the type of equipment and or solution that you use for your business. Sure. We um, currently use um, Norvell's mobile M1000 machine with the M gun. And then we also use the Apollo T100 mini mist, which they're kind of both the same, um, same machine. Um, we've been using those since we started um we haven't really changed anything um with our machines we just found that those give the best coverage and um really not too much maintenance involved with them they're easy to clean easy to maintain if anything does go you know wrong with them um and i think it's just uh, you know on a comfort level too since we've been using them for so long i did try to go um use a different gun and i just wasn't used to it so i went back to you know my original my original machine. And plus, since we were mobile, they're pretty lightweight, so they're easy to um, take with us to mobile appointments. They're not too heavy or anything like that. Yeah, um, th- those little machines are workhorses. I know I usually recommend those yeah. to everybody. The, the T100 is just, you know, 300 bucks or so, and you got a machine for life, basically. Yeah, you do. Yeah, yeah. And then, I mean, they're not they're not too loud or anything, um, so they're, you know, they're pretty good to take to clients' homes with you as well. Yeah, that, yeah and that, the, the noise factor is a tricky thing, and a lot of people I see asking about quietest machines and things like that, and to be honest, like the decibel levels, you know, the, the, the way that it runs, they're all so similar. Like, if somebody mm-hmm. told me it was the quietest machine, it's not going to be that much, you know, it's like a hair dryer. It's not, like, incredibly quiet, so... Uh, quiet boxes or something like that are necessary if you want to take it and actually make it quieter. Mm-hmm. Right. Yeah. And then, um, so as far as the solution, um, we've kind of, since being in business, we've tried so many different kinds. Um, but right now we currently use the, um, the AYU sunless line. And then we also use the unfiltered line. Um, so we found that those two have been, um, you know, the clients really like those two lines. It gives them nice color, um, and they're both, they both offer enough different options that we can kind of tailor it to the client's specific skin types and, you know, how dark or light they want to get. Um, you know, we're always looking for, you know, other solutions. Um, so we, we, we still test a lot, but um, right now those are the two ones that we've been um, having success with. Yeah, very good. I don't hear too much uh, anymore about AYU, but I know that you've used that for a long time, and that's a, the, another shout out here to to Carla with uh, Unfiltered. And I've heard a lot of good things about that product line. Yes. So back when you started in uh, in 2012, there was probably some training and certification classes around. Did you go through any before you started? I, I think you've gone through a few since, but. Did you go mm-hmm. through specific training courses before you got started, or did you just kind of jump in and, and learn yourself? Um, I definitely went through some training and certifications because I had um, I had worked in a tanning salon before, but we had the automated spray booth, so I've never had experience with actually spraying someone myself. So I wanted to make sure that I read as much as I could out there, watched as many videos as I could. Um, but I started off going through the um, Norvell University training and doing all of their classes that they offered at that time. And um, those classes really helped me into learning the basics of spray tanning since I had never really done it before. Um, so anything that they had offered, I've done. And then I even looked online at different little certifications that maybe other solution companies offer. I did too. Um, but, um, you know, most of it, though, of course, is, you know, trying it out on my friends and people willing to, you know, do it first because I wanted to make sure that I practiced on a ton of people to perfect it before I actually went out and did real clients. Sure. Yeah, yeah. Just just like everybody, that's good to, to get some training under your belt, definitely, and, yeah. and get certified. But getting out there and doing it is the next and the, the biggest step. So right. you kind of got to jump into it eventually. So, Sarah, this is the the final question today. If you were uh, could write a letter to yourself today on 
That is uh, February 7th, 2017, to yourself back in May uh, of 2012. What would you say to yourself? Oh, gosh. Um, probably uh, you're telling myself that my business is not going to be successful overnight. Um, it takes time. You'll have slow times where you're questioning, you know, whether you want to be in the business or not. Um, but don't let that scare you away. Um Learn from it, you know, take the time that you do have your slow times and work on the business. Um, Be open minded, Um, you know, take criticism from people. If, you know, a client's not happy, learn from that, find out why. Um, Just, yeah, just keep going and don't give up. And, you know, like I said before, there's many times where I've questioned, is this business for me? But, you know, I would tell myself, don't think about that. Just keep going, work harder. Um, you know, you're doing the best that you can and, uh, don't give up. Yeah, that, that's great. And you're obviously not the first person to say patience. That's, that is the (laughs) biggest thing in business. And, you know, people need to look instead of one to two months and, you know, one to two, three, four years down the road where they want to be and what steps they're going to have to take to get there. Uh, being open-minded as a business owner is huge. Uh, You know, a lot of people I feel like get set in their ways and we all do this just naturally and we don't want to adjust or might just instinctively think the client is wrong or something like that just because it's our business. But they are the ultimate uh, deciding factor. They're the ones that are paying you for your service. So what can you do to better serve them? And keeping an open mind and listening listening to them can definitely help that. Right, yeah, yeah, because you don't want to – I mean, I know from, you know, if I were to go into a business and I had a complaint and the, you know, business owner just shuts me down, I was like, no, it's your fault, you know, go home or whatever, then I'm obviously never going to come back to that business. You want to, you know, reach out to the client and be like, okay, let's, what can we do to fix this? How can we help you? Because you want to gain that trust with that client. Absolutely. Absolutely. Well, Sarah, thank you so much for joining us today on the Happy Tans podcast and for sharing any information. If people have specific questions for you, do you mind if people reach out? And if so, what's the best way to contact you? Yeah, sure. They can reach out. Um, They can email me at tan at bronzebeautyst.com or feel free to send me a friend request on Facebook under Sarah Rubino or, you know, like Bronze Beauty on Facebook. Any way that you want, you can reach out to me. Awesome, Sarah. Thank you so much again for spending time. Thank you so much for offering that information and and sharing your story with us. Thanks, Grant. Thanks for having me. You're welcome. Bye-bye. Hey everyone, Grant from Happy Tense here. Thank you so much for joining me on episode 7 of the podcast with our guest Sarah Rubino from Bronze Beauty Spray Tanning in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. She was so kind to share information about taking her business from a mobile business and now into having a physical location. She touched on some challenges that she had as the business grew, talked about how she now has two employees and what that entails and kind of how her business has changed and what's changed for her, you know, on a daily and weekly basis. Again, a lot of emphasis on uh, taking action and also having patience and believing in yourself and not giving up. So thanks again, Sarah, for joining us. Thank you so much, everyone, for listening. If you have any questions, comments, feedback, you know where to find me. Just go to happytans.com or happytans.biz and reach out to me, grant at happytans.com. As always, this podcast is sponsored by happytans.biz, the first sunless tanning website builder for Sunless Tanners Only. Thanks again and have a wonderful day.